Hello again. It's good to be back. You'll notice I'm wearing different clothes because we're recording on a different day this time. Video six, uh, continuing our course on IELTS speaking. My name is Gavin Scott from Gate English Training School, and I'm looking forward to going over a few things today relating to part two of the speaking. Specifically, we're going to look at signposting language. Don't worry, I'll tell you in a moment what that is. Uh, we're going to look at generally the kind of questions that we get from the four questions and how we would normally answer them uh, using signpost language as well. And then I'll talk a little bit about some other things like what happens at the end of the two minutes and the extra questions they ask. So first thing of all, this is a term I use and some books and teachers use this. There are other words for it, but we use the term signposting. Now a sign is a, something that would say like, welcome to Beijing. You know, it tells you where you are and what is coming next. If you're driving down the road and you see that sign, welcome to Beijing, you know that after that sign, you have arrived in Beijing. Now, when we're doing speaking and writing, we'll also have a little bit of a look at this uh, later when I do a writing course. Um, it's very important to have um, clear language to tell the reader, the reader or the listener, what is happening next. Um, it also says what just happened sometimes. If you've been speaking for a while, you want to let them know that you've finished. And it also tells you the purpose of this section or in the writing, the purpose of this paragraph there. Uh, and that makes it very clear because when you're nervous and you're speaking maybe a little bit unorganized, then you start to sometimes jump from question to question or topic to topic without a clear movement between them and this can mean the listener is not sure what you're talking about and that's the biggest problem basically that's the number one reason why we need to think sign uh, use signposting language because you can really confuse the listener if you um aren't fluidly moving through the questions with good signposting language now again it gives structure to the overall um um speaking task or writing task to show we've got this section, this section, this section. There's a couple of other reasons why we use it. Uh, first of all is time. Um, a lot of students think, oh, I can't speak for two minutes or I can't write 250 words. Well, when you use signposting language, it's good, simple language that once you've practiced it, you use quite naturally and easily. And that adds words, it adds time. Yeah, so if you use good signposting language, you'll add 20 seconds to your speaking you know, and some more vocabulary and good grammar structures. And like I said, it makes things very clear to the people listening or reading. And that's, that's something that we will have a look at in a second. So at the start of part two, the basic signposting language is something um, that just tells the examiner which topic you have chosen to talk about. Um, so you would say the movie I would like to talk about is um, Transformers 3, which is an American... I'll show you a bit more about that in a second. Um, you want this opening start for a couple of reasons. First of all, when you use this, it will sound more confident and it will make you feel more confident. Many students at the start of part two go, um, I want to talk about, yeah, um, uh, oh, the movie I want, uh, I want to talk about Transformers 3, um, which was one of the worst movies ever made. Um, and they kind of don't have a clear start. And if you don't have a good start, you might start to feel more nervous and make more mistakes. But if you start confidently, um, then it will help you feel more confident and speak better throughout the two minutes. The movie I would like to talk about is the movie Fight Club, which is an American drama action film from about 20 years ago, starring Brad Pitt and Edward Norton. See, that's one long, fluid sentence um, with good grammar structure. The other thing people do if they don't have a good start is use lots of short sentences because they're not prepared and they haven't practiced. They might say something like, uh, I want to talk about the Harry Potter movie, Death, The Deathly Hallows. 
Um, this is a fantasy fiction movie. Um, it was the eighth movie out of the series and the last movie. And they're using all these short sentences that could be connected very easily. And again, I'll give you my example from before, my favorite movie, Fight Club. Um, the movie I would like to talk about is the movie Fight Club, which is an American drama or action movie from about 20 years ago, starring Brad Pitt and Edward Norton. Now you see in that sentence, I've spoken for a decent amount of time, 15 seconds or 20 seconds there. I've said the name of the film, I've said where it comes from, the kind of film, who it was starring, and that's all the basic little information. You can get that out of the way, um, which you need to mention, and then move on to talking about the next question, which is probably what the film is about, and that can take a long time. So having a good sentence structure to start, even though you shouldn't really memorize whole speeches, it's very good to memorize your opening sentence structure. So you say, the city I would like to talk about is Edinburgh, which is the capital, which is the um, capital city of Scotland. Or the person I would like to talk about is my grandmother, who I lived with for one year when I visited her in Scotland. Um, the furniture I would like to talk about is the sofa in my living room, which I've had for maybe seven years now. So that structure isn't going to change. Um, so you should practice that. Look at five or six topics and just practice that opening sentence and put in maybe three pieces of information with connected grammar in that sentence. So that's the first signposting language we have there. Um, after you've done that, the second thing we're going to do is move on to look at the questions there. Um, so the Depending on the question, the second question could be, where did you get this sofa? Or what does this uh, machine do? Or where does your friend work? So these kind of questions would be you know, those second, third, fourth questions they ask you in the second part of the IELTS speaking. So when you get that, so looking at the first one there, where did you get it? And this is a fairly simple one. You could say, very, I would like to talk about a sofa which I bought at Ikea two years ago. You could put it into your first sentence there because that's, that's not a big question. You don't have to say a lot in that sentence. You could then go on to add another sentence explaining the moment you bought it. So again, uh, I'd like to talk about a, a blue, um, a blue L-shaped sofa that I bought at Ikea a couple of years ago when I was... Um, I'd moved into a new apartment and there was no furniture in there. Um, so when we moved in, we went to buy lots of furniture and we thought it would be easier to go to Ikea um, because, of course, they have lots of uh, good furniture there that isn't too expensive. But you can add some other information to that in the next sentence there. What does it do? You might say a phrase like, in terms of the function of this machine, it's mostly used for cleaning the floor. Um, which is, of course, what a vacuum cleaner does, but it, um, it can be used to clean the floor without me having to hold it. It's automatic and will go around the floor by itself. Um, so again, in, I use the phrase there, in terms of what it does or in terms of the function. Now, you can always just use a very simple sentence. Like, where do they work? Oh, my friend works at um, a famous... A movie company in Los Angeles as a sound engineer making the sound effects for different movies. So you can just use that. My friend works in A. But the main point is it's clear. You're telling them that right now I'm saying this. Um, you could say another phrase there could be something like, um, I'd like to talk now about my friend's workplace and uh, the company and location that they work. My friend works for a um, Hollywood uh, movie studio uh, in Los Angeles in California. Now you could say that phrase. Um, that's probably more for writing than speaking, but it is something that you can do when you're nervous and you're not sure what to say and you want to add some words to make your answer longer. Um, what did you do there? Well, 
while I was working at that company, I did many different jobs. So again, you hear that there's no special language there. I'm just using the grammar from the question, but I'm making it very clear that this is the question I'm answering. So while I worked there, I did many different jobs. Uh, the last one there, what does she look like? Um, in terms of my friend's appearance, or as for her appearance, there's a couple of phrases there I've mentioned in terms of before, and another one, as for. Uh, when it comes to her appearance, she is very tall with long blonde hair. So there's a few different little phrases you can use there. Okay, so the last question that you usually get in part three, uh, part two, is the why question. Not always, but usually that last question is the why question. Uh, why do you like it? But it will often say, you should say why you like it or why you liked it. Um, and again, there's a couple of different phrases you could use here. Um, the reason why I liked it was because. Or why did you enjoy it? Oh, I really enjoyed this holiday because. There's no, nothing particularly special about that second one. Um, but again, the main thing is you're using the language from the question, as I keep saying to you many times. So you should know by now that's an important thing. Um, the main reason why I admire them is because of their confidence in their work. Why would you like to do, why would you like to read this book again? Um, there's a few reasons why I'd like to read the book again. And the first one is because it was such a strong emotional book that really made me feel deeply for the main characters. But I'd also like to read it again because it was such a long time ago that I'd forgotten a lot of the key things that happened. And I'd like to remember what they were. So there's a few different phrases there that you could be using. Um, as for, in terms of, um, this thing has many different functions. I first did, bought this when I was in high school. I first got this phone when I was... Uh, 12 years old. When I went to um, Italy, I did many things on this holiday. The main reason why I like that TV show is because it was... Okay, so quite a lot of different phrases there that you can use. And the main thing is, um, when you've finished one section and you're moving on, it's okay to pause, think, and use that language to move on. So again, you've got your four questions, you should have your notes, and while you're looking at your notes and speaking, you should be going, okay, uh, the movie I would like to talk about is the movie Fight Club, which is an American action film, um, which I first saw about 20 years ago uh, with a friend at the cinema. Um, in terms of the kind of movie this is, this is a drama or action film. Uh, there's a little bit of action, but it's more of a drama um, because it's about the relationships between the people and some of the crazy things they do. Um, as for the, the main characters in this film, film uh, there's a character called, um, actually I've forgotten the main character's name, but Edward Norton plays the guy and he really hates his job. Um, He's traveling around and he's flying everywhere. He's so busy away from home, but he lives in this perfect apartment. But he really hates his life. And then there's another character, which is played by Brad Pitt, who the first character meets on the plane. And they exchange business cards. And then Edward Norton's character, I'm not going to go through the whole plot there, but it's a really good film, actually. If you haven't seen Fight Club, you should have a, have a look at it. Um, the main reason why I love this film is because it has a very deep message about society and about how we should live our life. Okay, so I think we're going to move on in a moment, but before I do, um, just have a stop and think about any questions you have there about part three. 